Shamai, and welcome to Bitcoin Coffee Break, the show where we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the markets you may be affecting it. The price is at $8,438.6. So the high of $8,475.8 and a low of $8,174.9. It's up 2.5%. Um, it's, it's looking pretty good there, isn't it, on the long term? Uh, if we zoom in, if we go to, let's go to a three month, shall we? Uh, Bitcoin's done what we thought it was going to do, it's, uh, which was either go up, continue to go up or fall back into its channel. Um, we didn't think it was going to go anywhere any below that channel or, or drop significantly. And this is a nice uh, organic rise up as well. There's, you know, there's, there doesn't look like there's much well action here. Um, we've also got like a three rising peak thing going on, which to me makes me feel very, very bullish indeed. Uh, it's a similar it reminds me, I don't know why, of, of here, because we've also got the kind of three rising peaks. Um, there, it reminds me of this area here. And uh, um, then we had like a $2,000 uh, price um, uh, run. And I imagine that we could have a $2,000 price run here. So I did tweet out yesterday, you know, 10K in a couple of days. Because I can imagine, just like in 2017, when we hit 9,000, we barely got those um, Dragon Ball Z memes out. When uh, it just smashed through and went up to 10K, so... I think um, as soon as, it seems to be repeating that trend, as soon as we um, sort of get, you know, halfway through $8,000, then we, we should be, you know, have, have our eyes on the target for 10K, not, not 9,000. Not, not, not 9, so, yeah, bullish, I think it's going to go up. Um, but this isn't trading advice, obviously. Let's have a look at the news feed, shall we? Binance's uh, US geoblock may negatively impact traffic if drastic steps are not taken. Facebook global coin... Uh, Zuckbox uh, may be a historic initiative, says RBC in the, uh, anal analyst. Global coin getting backed by Visa, Mastercard, and Uber. Um, if Bitcoin um, uh, out the get out the door was accepted by uh, Visa, Mastercard, and Uber, then I would have said that we'd failed. Like the point is that we decentralized, and we're taking power away from these uh, systems. So the very fact that they're getting into bed with uh, Globe with Zuckbox means that. Uh, it's very much centralized and um, they feel that they can still retain some power, which is what we, we don't want them to do. So did Craig Wright forget that he claimed to be Satoshi Nakamoto? We'll have a look at that in a moment. John McAfee launches uh, McAfee Magic Practice pro Portal for newbies to learn trading. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> My look at that. Amazon customers uh, will have an option to pay for items in Ethereum with new solution from two startups. So. It's not Amazon accept, accepting the Ethereum, which a lot of the, the headlines will probably claim. It's uh, the ability to pay for stuff using Ethereum through these other parties. So a bit like Purse.io, I imagine. So Ethereum, Ethereum is at $256. So the high of 258.6 and a low of 252.3. It fulfilled that ascending triangle pattern which it formed, um, just as it should do. It went up to like $263, $4, $5. And then it dropped back down. Looks now like we're, we're building some sort of like symmetrical triangle on the upside. So I imagine Ethereum will continue to go up. Bitcoin's going up, so Ethereum will go up. Um, Bitcoin is higher under this impression that one day everyone will wake up. They'll suddenly pour all their money into Bitcoin. And they'll forget about all these altcoins. And all the altcoins will drop to nothing. It's just not going to happen anytime soon. So um, Litecoin. Litecoin's at $126.8 to the high of $133.3. A low of $125.7. Uh, just as Bitcoin's gone up, Litecoin's dropped down. So we've got those three ascending uh, peaks in, in uh, Bitcoin. We've got three descend descending peaks in, in Litecoin, which is very bearish indeed. Um, we made it back into that uh, channel, that bullish channel, which is just being on the upside. Um, and I imagine we'll, we'll stay there in that channel because uh, it's going to probably just come back down to kind of where it met, left Bitcoin because it decoupled from Bitcoin on June the 7th. And since then, it's had this bull run. Um, uh, people have been saying it's to do with the halvening and I imagine there'll be some people buying because of the halvening which is in August um, uh, but you know obviously it's overbought and now it's dropping um, and it, it, it's going to drop a little bit more but I don't think it's going to drop significantly uh, so yeah so it's at, well, I don't think I've done the price uh, $127 at a high of $133.3 a uh, low of $125.7 so we'll keep an eye on Ethereum there so it's decoupled and now it's trying to recouple um, and Monero has, uh, has, uh, has dropped. I'm not sure why it's dropped. That doesn't really make much sense to me. There must have been some Monero-centric news, I imagine. Um, we have had its ascending triangle. 
and then it did go up and fulfill that triangle uh, just like Ethereum but then it's dropped quite significantly over a very short period of time. I'll have to check out the news for Monero and see what's going on there. Um, so the price is at $87.9 at a high of $90.7, a low of $87.4. Let's have a little look at gold. Um, so gold is at $1,344. It did have a pretty significant move um, yesterday where we kissed $1,362 uh, $1, um, uh, and then we had a low of $1,341. So it's pretty much doing exactly what we thought it would do. Um, it's hitting that sort of $1,370 range um, and then going back down just as it's done for the past six years. Um, it's likely to do it again. Although, as I've said in a couple of these shows, uh, there is this nice ascending triangle thing happening here. So on a very long term um, so so and we are in the sort of conditions which gold should should quite like um, but probably if we go on the last six years it's just going to bounce about here for a bit you know it's not dropping anytime soon even though we've had like a big drop today um, uh, it's going to bounce around this area here and then it'll probably just go down a little bit um, let's have a look at the news feed shall we for gold uh, gold smashes 1350 benefiting more than oil from mid east attacks so that's the straight of uh hormus 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 something like that um where a couple of tankers were attacked um trump said it was iran iran said it wasn't them uh there's a, 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 a uncomfortable narrative which makes me feel quite uncomfortable which is the you know let accept our aid narrative which uh, the us are doing at the moment on iran stop the revolution accept our aid so that always worries me that kind of narrative um now, Iran has explicitly said it wasn't them who, who did the attacks. Uh, uh, so, yeah, so a bit, a, a bit unnerving, you know, particularly when there's sort of oil involved. Um, let's have a look at gold. So gold's at $52.5 a barrel. It's had a high of $52. Well, $53 per barrel, let's say. And it's had a low of $51.7 per barrel. There's patterns going all over the place uh, today. And um, uh, um, oil is no different. So uh, this is what we call a diamond bottom. And it's a very uh, significant reversal pattern. Um, so I imagine oil's going to reverse. And I'm, I, I imagine I'm not the only person to have seen this. So I can imagine yeah, oil all reversing. Um, Brazil's oil sector joins nationwide strike against pension reform. The US production boom is becoming a problem. The truth behind the torpedo tankers, torpedoed tankers. Um, so I, I, I mean, I imagine if there's tension, then there's less oil. Does that make sense? And then the price will go up. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an oil guy. So it's just worth having a look at the chart in, in relation to Bitcoin, I think. Um, S&P 500. So the S&P 500, we've managed to kind of keep that 2,889, what, 2,890 price range for long enough to this, for this to turn, to turn into a pennant. So I imagine uh, the S&P, the, S&P 500 is going to go up. Um, it could just be that people are now bored of the, the, the trade war tariff sanction news. Um, and, uh, you know, the market's managed to hold, so the prices may just go up. Um, obviously, in the long term, an unstable world isn't great for, for markets. So because people can't plan stuff and that's not you know good for actual production. But I suppose what? What, what relation, what price relation do does production have on, on actual price of uh, market share? So, um, yeah, so we'll, um, I imagine the markets are probably going to go back up now. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin Reddit, shall we? See what's going on in Bitcoin land. Uh, Chaincode Labs, breaking Bitcoin Amsterdam 2019. Nice video there on the front page. Bitcoin build secu system security. So, uh, one to watch. Not a very catchy title there, but one to watch. I'm going to try and watch that a little bit later, I think. Uh, reminder, the most important thing you can read in this entire subreddit, get your Bitcoins off that exchange today. Imagine logging into Coinbase, Binance, Crack and blah, 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 and you get an urgent announcement. Uh, catastrophic attack, user funds frozen, new account balance, zero dollars. If that makes you feel uncomfortable, um, you need to take action today, not tomorrow. It's very true. These centralized exchanges, they get hacked all the time. People lose all their funds. So if you have got funds sat on some exchange, get them off. To be honest, even if you've got dust on some exchange, uh, um, that might not always be dust. So if you've just got a couple of Satoshis here, a couple of Satoshis there, pull them off. You know, 
don't be lazy. We all do it. We're all lazy, but don't be lazy. Put it on your, put it in your hardware wallet. Ratoshi, nice. Uh, died for us, never forget. So that's the rat who broke into the ATM and, and ate um, twenty thousand, eighteen thousand dollars worth of worth of money, uh, dollars, and then uh, died. So um, another Ratoshi, uh, uh, fake Toshi, slipping up. We're going to watch that in a moment. Uh, world's first live streaming mouse racing mice race, accepting only bitcoins as bets. Fantastic. Um, let's have a little look at mice race, shall we? This is this is looking cool. It's a nice website actually. He's in Twitch. Wow, look at that. So we got a little mice. Jeez, he's not. Uh, what's his name? Silver. Silver's not little, is he? Unless he's close up to the camera, I guess. So. Uh, this is kind of like a bird's eye view, I think. And then we've got our little mice here at the beginning. And then we have place bets in Bitcoin only. I hope they're using lightning. Are they using lightning? This is great. This is my Saturday night. I've got a bottle of whiskey. I've got a cigar and I've got micerace.com. And this is what I'm doing tonight. And that's what all I'm doing is, can we have sound? Fantastic. Um, uh, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey hints at how Square Crypto may support Bitcoin's code. So um, uh, Square Crypto uh, may support. Uh, I think he pretty much said that they will support. So uh, he's going to, uh, his developers in Square Crypto and then developers he hires. And then he'll probably sponsor some development time on things like Core. Um, even if he's just, he said, even if he's in the article, he says even if they're just doing code review uh, to help push development along. They're going to try and help and support developers as much as possible. Brilliant. Jack Dorsey's the guy you want, you know, in the position he's in. Um, it's amazing that a relative outsider, you could call him an outsider, um, has to come into the Bitcoin space and, and and just do the thing which all of these rich Bitcoin people should do, rather than focus on their own egos and crap, just support developers and then help build Bitcoin, help make Bitcoin strong. Um, uh, you know, there's people like Luke Dash Jr. should not be having to go and do other work other than Bitcoin. They should be have enough uh, resources just to sit and concentrate entirely on Bitcoin all the time. Um, so, yeah, we need to support our developers. So well done, Jack Dorsey, for recognizing that. I'm surprised others didn't before you. Um, and maybe others will follow you. Uh, so, yeah, this is the Craig Wright story. So did Craig Wright forget that he claimed to be uh, Satoshi Nakamoto? So obviously you know, Craig Wright is a knob um, and a liar. Uh, and uh, his subconscious has finally finally ki kicks in where it can. Um, I think I've already watched it, so I'm going to have to refresh the page, I think, so we get back to the right point. Uh, so let's have a little watch of the video, shall we? Ooh. What a tool. It's a problem when you lie. Don't lie, you know. And don't lie significantly. There's no point in life lying like that. Um, and then don't go on stage repeatedly and try and convince people that you aren't lying because eventually your subconscious will break through and it'll it'll tell the truth either through body language or through just being an idiot and slipping up like that. So, so this is the, so he read he read you know something in you know the Bitcoin white paper um, uh, when obviously if he says that he wrote it then he wouldn't have read it he would have wrote it wouldn't he. Uh, so the other story, which is pretty cool, I like this, is JP Morgan seeking a job candidate with Bitcoin scaling technology, but asserts it's nothing to do with actual Bitcoin. So they've got a job, a job advert out um, for a uh, blockchain director. So it's a pretty pretty high up in JP Morgan, good salary and all that. Uh, and they've got to have a, a lot of development experience in specifically Bitcoin and Bitcoin scaling and Lightning Network. Although... It would be completely inaccurate to say uh, or report that we are possibly exploring considering doing any work with Bitcoin or any other public cryptocurrencies. A spokesperson for the New York uh, based firm said, we're not, I hope I'm being totally clear. So although in the advert they want someone who has a lot of Bitcoin experience and no second layer scaling technology stuff, um, they don't want a Bitcoiner uh, and they're not going to, whoever they employ are not going to be working on Bitcoin at all or anything to do with Bitcoin. So they're keeping their line of blockchain, not Bitcoin, even if behind closed doors. So obviously Bitcoin and Bitcoin, um, and uh, they're going to be Bit they're going to be uh, you know saying blockchain, not Bitcoin, um, and dis trying to discredit Bitcoin as long as possible, because that means they can buy up Bitcoin. 
um, and then also buildings which engage with Bitcoin. So they keep their position. So that's really interesting. I really like that. It's fun. Um, uh, in their defense, in JP Morgan's defense, their public blockchain quorum, uh, which is like an Ethereum based thing. Uh, I want to say crap coin, but I mean, it's got 400 contributors. It's um, free and open source. Uh, it's less a GPL um, three license. So it's decent enough license. It's got 11,000 commits. You know, so it's a, it's a big project. Um, and uh, they're exploring uh, alternative consensus mechanisms, so they don't need proof of work or um, uh, 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 proof of stake in their uh, network. So at Quorum, it look it makes use of other sort of consensus mechanisms or exploring other consensus mechanisms, which is cool. Um, you know, the very fact that we talk about Bitcoin being a virus, but actually free and open source is a virus, to the point where J.P. Morgan Chase are having to um, sponsor and pay money and dedicate resources to developing a free and open source project, which then everyone, anyone else can go and fork and, and pull any good out of and, and implement elsewhere. So it's cool. Um, so yeah, so on that note, uh, that's um, I won't be doing a show tomorrow because it's Saturday and I'm trying to take the weekend off. I've also got a lot of preparations to do for the San Francisco Bitcoin conference, which I'm super duper excited about. Um, I'll be getting in San Francisco on Wednesday. Uh, so hit me up on Twitter if you know of anything to do. Although I will be busy because I'm going to run a uh, tutorial, make one of my modules at the conference. And then uh, I'll also be uh, retrofitting uh, lightning payments into, I think, some arcade machines, which they're hiring at the conference as well. So I've got to build the finish building the modules for that as well. So anyway, uh, have a fantastic weekend. And, um, and yeah, yeah I'll, I'll see you on Monday, hopefully.